Hi everybody, I'm Laurie, VP of Developer Relations at Llama Index, and I'm here to walk you through uh, the JSON mode of Llama Parse. Uh, Llama Parse, if you're not familiar with it, is our service for parsing complex document formats, things like PDFs, Word files, uh, PowerPoint presentations, spreadsheets, stuff like that. Uh, and usually when you're using it, you get a markdown format uh, of your parsed document. But if you want to go into more detail and have more control over what you're doing with Llama Parse, uh, there's also a JSON mode that you can use to get really, really fine grained control of what is returned and the individual components of your document. So let's look at how you use it. Um, this notebook starts uh, as I'll do with installing your dependencies. In this case, we just need Llama Index Core and Llama Parse. Uh, and we've set up our Llama Cloud API key. We're going to use uh, for our example, a uh, nearly 300 page PDF of the San Francisco budget from June, 2023. Uh, it has lots of charts and diagrams and things like that. Uh, so it's a, a good playground for this kind of stuff. Um, getting uh, JSON mode to work is uh, really very simple. You use import Llama parse as you always do. You set up uh, your parser. In this case, the only options that we're sending are verbose equals true so that it tells us what it's parsing. Uh, and we're also setting premium mode to true. Uh, this turns on all of the bells and whistles uh, so that we get all of the features that we can possibly see. Uh, and then the actual magic is just calling get JSON results on a specific file with our parser. Uh, We'll skip the actual parsing process because it takes quite long for nearly 300 pages. Um, but once you've got it, you, got, you get some, an object with uh, some, you get an array of objects uh, with some top level keys. Uh, those include pages, job metadata, job ID, and file path. Job ID and file path, pretty self-explanatory. They are the job ID of this parsing job uh, and the file path is where we got this file. Um, Pages is where all of the interesting stuff is, but let's just briefly look at job metadata first. Uh, if one of the things that you want to do when you're running a lot of parsing jobs is uh, know how many credits you are using uh, and stuff like that, this is where you can get that information. So you can see that this was a very big parsing job and it was in part and it was in premium mode. So it used 5,000 credits, which is really uh, far more credits than you would usually use to parse a document because it's a very long document and we did it in premium mode. Um, this particular run was a cache hit. Uh, you can see that there. Uh, so uh, this didn't use any, this particular job didn't use any additional credits uh, or parse any additional pages because it was already parsed. But if this was the first time, then you would have seen uh, that the job credits usage was the same as the 5,000 total credits used. Um, we've printed the number of pages. It's 362, so it's even more than 300 pages. Um, and this is a picture of the first page. Uh, as you can see, there's some text, there's a really big image, um, and then there's this uh, table of credits. Let's look at the actual pages object and see what keys we get inside of the pages object. Uh, we get some basic ones. Uh, page is simply the page number. This starts at one rather than zero. Uh, and status, this is usually just okay unless something went wrong processing the page. It's possible to get a return object where not all of the pages processed correctly and this is where you'd find that out. Uh, width and height are the dimensions of the page in pixels. Um, triggered auto mode uh, indicates whether the page upgraded itself to auto mode. We will cover that in uh, another uh, video about how auto mode works. Uh, like, likewise, structured data and no structured content will get covered in uh, videos about that. Uh, and no text content is a key that gets set to true if the page was empty. So you can tell the difference between a page that's empty because of an error and a page that is empty because it was intentionally empty. So uh, let's look at some of the properties in this list that are not these basic properties. The first one that we're gonna look at is text. Uh, this is a property of every page. And in this case, you can see that it is uh, the basic 
uh, fixed width layout of all of the text on the page. Uh, so you can see the headings, the proposed budgets, you can see London's name, uh, uh, and you can see here a confused little block of text. If you look at that, that's uh, the, the extractor trying to extract text from this image, from the city and county seal. Uh, and it just got confused about that. We'll see more about that in a little bit. Uh, and then you get the table of contents, which it did pretty well. Um, the next field is MD, which stands for Markdown. Um, markdown is much more uh, parsed in a much more sophisticated way than the plain text. Um, in this case, you can see that it is uh, marked up various levels of heading, the proposed budget, uh, London's name is an, a uh, second level heading, the uh, third level heading exists, and this table has been turned into an actual markdown table. And also the image, instead of trying to parse little bits out of it, uh, the parser has recognized that it's looking at an image and what the image is, which is a circular seal of the city and county of San Francisco. That's a very clever summary of what you're looking at there. Uh, so you don't need uh, to try and like infer from little random chunks of text what you're looking at. Um, if you actually take that markdown and render it as markdown, that's what's happened here, you see that it renders very nicely indeed. Um, next big key is images. Uh, JSON mode uh, extracts all of the images on the page and um, uh, stores them as separate images that you can download. So if you are if you have an image heavy PDF and you want you know, to extract the images like from a brochure or something, this is a really great way of doing that. Um, you can see that the image data uh, comes with metadata about how big it was, where on the page it was, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, and you can also um, download the image itself. The SDK has a convenience function called get images. Um, rather than download all of the images in this 362 page document, I uh, did a little messing around with the array here so that I would have only one page. Uh, and then I downloaded the images in that page. Uh, and now I'm, I'm rendering that image and you can see that it is uh, all by itself, the city and county seal of San Francisco. Um, now would be a good time to look at the OCR field, which is part of pages as well. OCR is where it's trying to extract text uh, from images and other complicated formats. Um, in this one, you can see that the OCR has found lots and lots of chunks of text. It tells you their X and Y and width and height, where exactly on the page they were, how big they were, uh, and its confidence score of how well it, know it thinks it was able to extract this text. Uh, and this is, uh, this is it attempting to interpret the, the seal of San Francisco again. You can see little bits of Latin coming through, and county and stuff like that. Um, if this were, if these were uh, less complicated images with you know text that wasn't upside down and sideways, uh, this would uh, be doing an excellent job of pulling out the text in each image for you. Uh, and now we get to items, which is the property of pages uh, that is the most interesting and the most powerful. Um, we saw the uh, in the markdown field that it's done a really great job of understanding what it's looking at and summarizing everything. Um, all of those chunks of markdown, um, the items array is where they come from. Um, so the items array has metadata about what each chunk is. So it knows that there's uh, text called the city and county of San Francisco. Uh, it has a bounding box for that text where it was on the page and the width and the height. Um, it has uh, a heading object. Like I said, it renders the markdown as a top level heading. So it's got metadata about this text. It's not just saying there was text on the page. It's saying this was a heading. This is important text. It was big. Uh, you can see other text blocks. You can see other heading blocks. Um, and you can see uh, a table that is marked as a table block uh, with rows and what's in each row. Um, this is, it also comes with a markdown version of the table. That is where that comes from. Uh, this is a really powerful way of extracting 
uh, only tables from a document if that is what you want to do, or just only a specific table. Uh, one of the really cool things that, it, that uh, Lama Parse can do is it can understand when it's looking at charts like this. So uh, on page 35 of the budget, there's this page which has <coughs> three different charts. Um, let's look at what it has done with the first one. Um, so I'm looking at pages, I'm looking at items, I'm looking at uh, uh, index two, which is where this particular table got rendered. Um, and the, the really cool thing here is that not only has it got, uh, you know, the, the basics of this chart, like an age group and number of residents, uh, but this chart doesn't have exact numbers, right? It just has a chart showing how big, uh, how many people there are, uh, but it has interpreted the chart and turned those into approximate numbers. So it said, you know, this chart, this bar was approximately that big, and therefore that represents about 300,000 people. Uh, this is incredibly advanced parsing. It's really great. Uh, and the final field that we're going to look at is links. Um, our budget PDF turned out not to have any links. So I've downloaded a different PDF that has some basic links in it. Um, and I've done the same job that I did before, get JSON results. Uh, and extracted that one page. And the page links property has this. It's an array of URLs with text uh, showing you where the text is, uh, showing you what the text is rather, and what it links to. That concludes our tour of all of the bits of Lama Parse's JSON mode. Uh, I hope you can uh, take from this quite how powerful and how quite how granular your control of the documents that you get back from Lama Parse can be. And uh, thanks for your time and attention. See you at the next one.